Hey, everybody. Welcome to the third installment of Women's History Month, uh, Women in Comics at PopCultureSquadcast.com. I am your host, Bob Harrison, and uh, we are going to have a great group of ladies tonight. We're going to talk about comics. We're going to talk about a specific comic. We are going to talk about this young lady right here. Shade the Changing Girl was part of the uh, Young Animal line when DC branded that line. It was uh, shepherded by Gerard Way. It lasted 12 issues, and then it was rebranded after the Milk Wars event, which was quite interesting. Uh, and it had another six issues as Shade the Changing Woman. We have tonight with us, uh, so far three, hopefully four, uh, of the people, women who are behind creating this amazing book. So um, I don't want, for everyone listening, I apologize for my voice. I've been kind of under the weather the last couple of days. So I'm going to try and hopefully these women will, will go ahead and, and share and talk to each other and we'll get this going. But I want to start off, I'm going to introduce um, the writer of this book. Cecil Katsalucci is one of my favorite writers. She is a writer. She is a musician. She has written, I'm going to move this for you people so I can look at you while you hear me. Um, she has written comics. She has written novels. Uh, she's written operas, and she was a rock singer. Her comics inc works include The Plain Janes, Female Furies, Batgirl, Star Wars, Shifting Earth, her autobiographical graphic novel, Girl on Film, which everyone should read. If you're watching this, you should read that book if you haven't. Uh, and tonight's subject, Shade the Changing Girl, among others. If anyone is looking to travel the world vicarious, vicariously, Cecil is the person to follow on social media. And before I embarrass myself any further we are going to bring her in Hi, Cecil. Hi, how are you? Oh, it's so good to see you again. How are you? I'm good. Good Good to see you, too. Sorry I was a little late to backstage. My my parents were having dinner at my house, and I was trying to usher them out the door. <laughs> <laughs> how did the Canadians win? Yeah, they did. Okay, good. Miraculously. Well, then, then, because, then it's all, all worth it. Yeah, because they're like last place now. So, you know. Um, Thank you so much for doing this. I, I want to talk, I want to bring in everybody else really quickly because I don't want to talk too much tonight, but I, I'm, I'm very excited. What, when you, just really quickly though, when you think back to, um, to your work in Shade and uh, would, would you say, I think Shade is probably the longest book that you worked. Did you work on, the you have 18 issues. Did you? In a, Batgirl. Did you, Batgirl, Batgirl well. you did yeah. longer? Okay. Same, 18, same you, amount. Same amount. Again, there are two, and, and it's interesting because I want to, we, we're going to talk about a little bit of Batgirl because when your Batgirl ended, the next Batgirl book that was, uh, the writer is on the show tonight as well. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's kind of interesting. I don't want to go too further, but um, let's bring in, let's bring in the artist for this wonderful book. And so that is why am I missing the video clip? Oh boy. Hang on a second. We're going to talk for a second. Great. While I download something here. What? Where are you now? If, if you don't mind me saying, because you, you, you are traveling all over the world. Yeah, I'm in Montreal right now, which is so you my, are? Yeah, in Canada. Uh, so I'm here in, in snowy, uh, snowy Montreal. And um, uh, it's beautiful here. And this is, you know, what I would consider my second home. Although mm -hmm. I, I feel like Europe... Anywhere in Europe that is a place to travel to is also my third home. Um, right. And obviously Los Angeles is my first home. So. All right. I have uploaded what I'm supposed to. So thank Great. you for, for filling for me.
Hi, Marley. Hello. <laughs> How are you? For everyone who isn't, I, I missed this part. Um, Marley is a comic artist. She's best known for her work on Effigy and Shade the Changing Girl, which are both imprints of DC. But she's also worked for Image, Dark Horse, IDW, and a bunch of other stuff. And the yeah. last time we saw each other, you were just pregnant oh. with Jack. <laughs> yeah, I, had a, I did one more. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just keep... keep <laughs> Well, congratulations, and Thank you. we're very happy to have you here to talk about this. Um, for those who don't know um, most, which is everybody, uh, you and I, the, the two of you and I started talking about this podcast a couple of months ago now. It's been it's been two months we've, we started talking about this, and I'm, I'm so glad we can finally get to do this tonight and talk about this, this amazing book. I'm going to yeah. go ahead and, and get so. ready. <laughs> I, and I think I think Kelly is ready, and we're gonna bring in Kelly next. Kelly um, is an artist and a colorist. She's worked for DC Image, Archie, and others. She's colored some of my favorite books over the past decade, including Rock Stars, Bad Luck Chuck, which again, people need to read that book. If you haven't read that book, that is so good. Um, she did Plastic Man, and of course, she the Changing Girl. So she's. A Hi, Kelly. <laughs> Hi. It's very nice to, to actually speak to you. This is the first time we've spoken. We've chatted for, for years, but I'm so glad you were able to do this. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to see everybody, too. I'm so glad. I hope everybody has a great time. And and before we get too far into this, um, I want to bring in our last guest so that you guys can, can all get everybody in here together. Um, our last guest is... Uh, is Becky Cloonan. She is a cartoonist, writer, artist. Uh, she did the covers for all the issues of Shade the Changing Girl and Change the Changing Woman. She is a true rock star in the industry. Among her many accolades, she's credited with being the first woman to draw the Batman title. Her work in Vertigo books like American Virgin and Demo launched her into stardom. She has worked for Marvel and DC, as well as her creator own work for Image. She's currently been writing both Wonder Woman and Batgirls with Michael Conrad. She just had her new book launched today, which is Exo Manamore War with Valiant. Uh, and we're going to bring her in. I like the gentle music. <laughs> I hear your babies. Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Say so okay. <laughs> oh, well, We made it. So before I forget, I want to, I want to, now I have like Bye, all so of, all, all of here, all of the Shade the Changing Girl it's Archie. and Changing Changing Woman's. But you guys were all in this book. Sorry, there. my son is singing Itsy Bitsy Spider. That's okay. Well, Jack is welcome too. But you guys are all in this book. Oh, yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah. Becky did the cover. Yeah. And every one of you did contribute to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly, Becky as did the, the cover. As the prophecy foretold. <laughs> yeah. Here we are all together again. <laughs> I just want to say I am so happy to be having a reunion for Shade the Changing Girl because I just feel like it is one of the most magical projects that I've worked on. And working with all of you was incredible and just the whole team for, um, for Shade. And I've just been thinking about it a lot recently and about how I wish more people would discover it. So thank you so much, Bob, for... Um, for you know, for for bringing us together for this reunion. Yeah. Well, I, I'm Thank I'm you. glad to do it. I, I agree with you. I think that it is sorely underappreciated, and I don't so I don't want to say it's underrated because it's just there's not enough people who who 
you know, talk about it. Although as I was doing some research, you know, kind of preparing, I did see somebody had said something about in 2021 about like why you need to be, why you shouldn't need to read both of them. And I thought that was, I think I forget which, which website it was on, but it was, it, it was, I'm like, yeah, you should be, everybody should read it. There's, there's so much in this. And it's interesting because there's a lot of, there's a lot of love for Shade the Changing Man um, in, in the community. Um, Peter Milligan's run, which was amazing. Um, and I really think that you guys took what they did there, um, the group of people that did there, and and really enhanced it, added something to the mythos. And and so along that line, like how did the approach for doing this book come about? Like if you guys, you know, Cecil, or how how were you guys approached to come on the book? And and what did you? How did you approach doing it? Well, I think I was the uh, the origin point of that. So, um, so I can, uh, and maybe Becky like was already roped in. Gerard had already roped her in for covers. I think you were um, already on the book, though. When oh, I was I? It, oh, okay. It was like the tempting. That's the that's the thing that like lured me. In. You're the Gerard, Gerard. Gerard knew how to pull you in. Hey. <laughs> um. So so basically, what happened was I got a call from um, Shelley Bond saying that Gerard was doing this young animal. Uh, initiative, this imprint at Vertigo. And um, she was like, Cecil, you know, at, this was after me, years of me, like every year being like, one day I'm going to have a monthly at the at the DC Comics, you know, forcing my handshakes with Dan DiDio and like having long conversations with Becky about how I wanted to do a monthly. And it was just, it, it was really hard. And so it was about, you know, it took me about 10 years before Shelly called me and said, um, we're doing this project. It's a teenage girl. It's an, and it's an alien that possesses the body of a teenage girl. And I was like, I can do this. <laughs> so that, that was brought to you. That's like, that's, yeah. that, 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 that was, that was given to you that it was going to be a girl. Yeah. I was like, I can do this. And then, you know, they had a, a pick that, so then they, you know, they said, okay, you have to do a, um, you have to do a, a two page script for Gerard to, to look at. And I did six pages, I think. And I, I went and I read all of Ditko's run, all of Milligan's run. Um, and uh, and I wrote this thing and then they brought me in for an interview and I met Gerard and I was super nervous because, uh, not because he was Gerard Way, because honestly, I'd never heard My Chemical Romance. So I was more concerned <laughs> that he would be upset that I didn't know who he was. Um, it's okay, look, this is a shared problem. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so I went in and, you know, he showed me the image of, of shade. It was this image that he had drawn where, you know, she was kind of like doing her thing. And I just looked at him and I said, you know, it's so boring that everybody on meta in um, Milligan and Ditko's run are human. I was like, I think she should be a bird. And I think the moment I said she should be a bird, Gerard was like, this is a woman that I can connect with. <laughs> yeah. The, the, that's yeah. a very Gerard idea, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it. And then it was just kind of like, you know, we were off, you know, we were off to the races. And I think there was a real simple understanding between me and Gerard because we'd both been in bands and we both sort of have similar ideas about how... Um, writing comics and being in a band is very similar um, in that collaborative way. And so uh, so that was kind of the beginning. But I'm a lady who always does her homework. So I read everything so that when and if I got the job, I was ready to bring in everything that Ditko fans and Milligan fans could turn to in our book while trying to figure out how to make it 100% our own. And she always does her homework in a way like, okay, they gave her that DC encyclopedia. <laughs> so, so like, what can I do with this one? <laughs> like, I know. I, I front to back, <laughs> back to front. I have post its. I have post its yeah. in it. <laughs> Going with the highlighter. Yeah, she's no joke, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
So I do. We do have a comment. So I just want to post that up there. That Sherry. Oh, Sherry thank loves you. Batgirl. Thank you. And also for 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 Becky's Batgirl. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure it's I, like a double that's, Batgirl. That's yeah. plural. So. <laughs> yeah. I love Batgirls a lot. You know, I I'm a huge fan. Bat Batgirls was one of my uh, best on, best Jeff. books of last year. So. So I, I, so anyway, so that. that's what happened when I got the gig. Uh, Shelly um, thought that. Uh, she, we had me and Marley had never met. Shelly <laughs> Shelly had thought that maybe we would make a good team. And I remember, I don't know if you remember this, Marley, but we had our first Zoom, and it was literally like we fell in love. Like I was yeah. like, oh, I'm meeting my oldest best friend that I've already known for five lifetimes. That's that's the magic of Shelly though. Shelly's like a matchmaker. Yeah, yeah she mm -hmm. like knows she like knew. one of her greatest strengths as an editor, not just like for knowledge of topics. But like the way she can be like, yes, this person and this person, not only will they work together like their styles, but they'll get along and she'll like put you in the same room. And and there'll be good chemistry. Good yeah, chemistry. Yeah, she made, you know, it's like friends for life. Thanks, Shelly. <laughs> yeah. Um, she'll be watching probably. But um, you're, you're we all, love you, you're, Shelly. You're Shelly. All, <laughs> in, my, in my conversations with her, you're all, she's fans. She's a fan of all of you um individually and and the book as well she's she's super proud from my from what she's told me she's super proud of the way that you guys you know worked that book out um you know you know after she after she left um but yeah, um shout out to jamie rich because he really took the reins in a in a really great way after and um, sure. I, I think what was really great about jamie is that jamie's favorite character in the dc universe is shade the changing man and so every single thing that I put in the scripts or that um, Marley tried to do that, you know, that we tried to do Becky on the covers, like he totally got what we were doing. So, you know, that was like a, that was a real boon. It would have, you know, obviously Shelly knows everything about shade as well. She was the editor on the original, mm -hmm. but, um, but that was like a real lucky break that, um, that Jamie inherited it. I, I want to kind of um, talk to, to Marley and Kelly in, in, now we know that that's how Cecil came up, you know, was pre presented with this is what we're going to do and came up with her ideas. But, you know, where did you get Marley? Did you get, okay, she's a Visualizing bird? It? Yes. Uh, like how yeah, much did you uh, get of that? And then, and then Kelly, how did you, because you're, you are, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, and I, you're shame on you for it, but Kelly is a phenomenal colors but this is a very specific style of coloring for this particular <laughs> book which is perfect for it what made you just what 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 direction were you given or what made you decide to kind well, of first, mute the we, colors go ahead i got my first sketch from oh gerard did a sketch first which was it was kind of uh you know oh, we're within yeah. you know the realm of what i went for but i'm you know oh god <laughs> i have to talk about um he he said that he liked uh there's a book called my the psychic girl oh, and yeah. yeah he took some influence from that um i'm uh, i i butchered chris bacala's name or bacala i got what i screw up his name he's like one of my the guys i'm absolutely obsessed with you know my entire career shelly knew that too i did shade fan art for her back when she was you know and uh like it, it kind of the meshing between, you know, influences and looking at that and, you know, and also because the character is, you know, obsessed with somebody from like the fifties and the early sixties. So if she, you know, landed on earth with, you know, long blonde hair, she's going to crop her hair into like a Vidal Sassoon bob made, sh made mm -hmm. sense. Right. Like she's going to do something. So I don't know. It was a kind of mesh of things like that. And then, me and Kelly went back and forth, but Kelly came up with, you know, we, we worked it out and she did, she did amazing colors. I don't know. So go ahead, Kelly, when you talk about <laughs> Kelly, with, with talk. Your, 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 your approach. I'm so glad um, you're here, please. Uh, well, I think Gerard initially emailed me. I got that same, the same drawing that he yeah. had done. And then he had said that he'd found me based off of a book I did um, called Never Boy mm -hmm. that he co-wrote with Sean Simon. 
um like or he co-wrote killjoys with sean simon and and sean was the one who wrote Neverboy, so he yeah. saw my work from there i don't know who drew killjoys it's a mystery <laughs> and so it shall remain <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> they then i got i of course said yes and then um bought like the the two trades that were out of the milligan run and then i bought all of the like floppy issues afterwards that weren't put into trade there's only, there's only one trade of the there's only six issues i think Really? Oh, shade, yeah. The so shade, the changing man. Look at the wall. <laughs> I think so. I think it's only. One, I think they only did the first. Oh no, maybe they did the first twelve in a book. Yeah. It's so. It, I don't know, but then, but then I bought like I have like a huge stack of like the rest of them. Um, because I was in Portland at the time, and Portland has like amazing comic shops. Um, so I just slowly collected them, and then we had a conversation about color for the first. I want to say like three pages or something. Um, yeah, because we did like I had I had samples of what I was thinking, and then you came back with really you know really awesome like variation on it. And yeah, we just kind of went for it. And I looked at I looked at people who would like how you had colored your work, and then yeah. how like other people had approached coloring your work, and then there was also talks about is it Paul Rentler? Is that his name? The Oh um, yeah, I think I, he's I he's like the collage graffiti artist oh, yeah, that no, that put no, the no, little no. zines out for San Diego yeah, that year. Yeah. Oh, those man. were he, great. He I just found mine the other day. Did he do a variant on, on three or four? He did a variant that was awesome too. Yeah, I I still follow him on Instagram. He's oh, yeah, his stuff too. is amazing. Um, and there was talk about trying to incorporate some of that texture work and then we went back and forth about yeah. texture. That, that, it, it, Gerard wanted that too is that ash yeah. style like yeah dirt. yeah and so then we pulled it had like the pop art filters that look really good on there too so yeah, yeah then we ended up with like a half tone look yeah. on certain things and pulled back from just completely throwing like big yeah. textures over it so there was like a whole <laughs> process and then I think originally Cecil maybe you came up with it was either you or Marley who came up with starting to use the colors for the two, for like oh, the Loma. Two, the, yeah, the, the yeah. Loma bubble and the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I just continued in that direction of like color coding like specific Megan things. Megan. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Megan was just floating around being a pain. <laughs> right, yes. right, right. <laughs> so it just all kind of took off from there. And I, I think yeah. another thing that's really important is that <clears throat> Uh, me and Marley had a Pinterest uh, together. Yeah, yeah. Where, I remember that. That, that yeah, that we shared um, so that anytime we saw a, a picture anywhere on the internet that we thought looked like madness, yes. um, that we would that we would put in there so that we could kind of build a sort of shared vocabulary. Because, you know, I think one of the most amazing things in this collaboration with Marley, and I'm sure, you know, um, you know, once it got to Kelly um, and Becky and I had our own thing where we would have many conversations about the covers, but um, was that, you know, I'm writing a script and it's like panel one and panel two, but also madness. So what is that? What does panel one and panel two mean? And, you know, so it was kind of like, this sort of handing it off to Marley, but we had this Pinterest of like, here's what madness kind of looks like. So yeah. then Marley would be like, oh, panel one, and then panel two, she's walking into the mouth of a hippopotamus, <laughs> like whatever, you know? I'm a, I, yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of aggressive with my layout. So I'm like, like, well, we're just gonna do this. <laughs> like, this makes sense, I guess. <laughs> and it made no sense, but that was the whole point of it, right? Yeah. I mean- I, I It was the freedom, okay. yeah. <laughs> translated at some point <laughs> like yeah there was crazy bits but at I least mean, it, it had like it, it was had its, like <laughs> surrealist like dada-esque kind of moments but it would it never felt like um non sequitur or like mm -hmm. it always felt grounded in something and I think that is like a testament to how you like focused the idea of like what madness is and so it's like not just anything but you have like a vision of like 
you know, the shared definition of like, you can just say the word and immediately you both know what each other are talking about. So yes. Yeah. I mean, it's even very much in like the first, um, when, when Megan Loma wakes up, you know, and she goes to the front desk and says, I need, Mm -hmm. you know, or whatever, whatever's going on, it is complete madness beyond her. And the people are just calling like, you need to come get her now, (laughs) you know? And, it, but at that, it sets the tone because it's not, it's not, it's ridiculous, but it's not, it's, it's understandable that something really weird is going on here. And then that tone follows through the remainder of the 18 issues, even, you know, even as the tone changes a little bit after Milk Wars and the, and the name changes. Um, and, and, and the, the, the universe or the, the settings expand. Um, it, it's that same type of like you set the tone early and you're, the reader knows that there's going to be something you're going to turn the page and you're not going to expect what's there, but it's going to be okay. And you're going to go and they're going to, you're going to still figure out what's going on with this person. And that's, a, that's the other part about this amazing story is that you, you, are telling the story about individuals and their own personal uh, faults, failures, wants, wishes. And it's all very, very uh, emotionally and intellectually stimulating. Um, Well, I think one of the things is that I think shade, the changing man, woman, girl, um, is really about what it what does it mean to be human and what is what is the existential sort of uh feeling of being alive and human and dealing with a world that is truly gone mad you know i mean we can look at our you know our own situation now you know and there's madness um you know and i don't think that there's any human in history who wasn't like wow shit's weird you know like this is strange and i think that like Shade the Changing Man and what Milligan had done was he really, um, and I've talked about this before, he really sort of um, mined the um, the geography of darkness of the human heart, of, you know, of, of, of pain and horror and cruelty and all of those things. And so That's when I was- like wrapped up in Americana too. Yeah, in Americana, you know, and- um, And so what I wanted to do, because she was a girl, she was a teenager, Marley and I talked a lot about how when when we've all gone from child to teenager, we all feel like aliens in our own bodies anyways. Um, And I thought, well, what's a landscape that we can have as our own place while allowing Ditko and Milligan to have, you know, to have, to have their, their shades live. And um, we're not, we're not overstepping their, their boundary. And, and for, um, for me, it was really the heart and love, you know, and what does, what does that mean to, you know, to love yourself, to love, you know, your, your friends, you to, to fall in love, to, to want to pull your heart out and not deal with love. Um, and so that was the landscape that we kind of mined for how she experiences uh, humanity and a weird hormonal teenage girl body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was it was really you hit those those targets. Uh, absolutely. Um you also introduced a, a bunch of other characters. So which which went on and and they were very critical to this to the story. Characters like River, Teacup, Lepuck, Lepuck. Lepuck. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, somebody's a hockey God. fan. Oh, we had emails that. about him. <laughs> uh, oh, the puck. Go ahead. Go ahead. Where, where, where did he come from? <laughs> so he's our sexy panda, and you know, <laughs> and um, I did. He is the Green Lantern of Meta now. I mean, that is a that, that is, is a true. thing. Yep. I keep I keep hoping that like some. Some new Green Lantern writer will pluck LaPuck out of out of obscurity. LaPluck, LaPluck, LaPuck out of uh, obscurity and and make him a part of the. You know when they were going to be doing that TV show. I think it it's not happening now, but it was like all these Green Lanterns from all over the. No, they still like, are. They're I'm on. like, oh, LaPuck, LaPuck, you stand a chance. It's know? his time. It's it's yeah. 
<laughs> He's the nicest, sexy panda there is. I like that everybody likes uh, like secretary birds now. And I was just like, yeah, that's just Loma. <laughs> She's yeah. <a> secretary. <laughs> like oh, and you know, another important character who I think kind of gets overlooked is Honey. Yeah. Honey yeah. is a very, very important character. And, you know, um, um, when, you know, w when we were doing Shade, uh, the Changing Girl, you know, we were having these three issue, uh, three page backups. Um, mm. And I, from the beginning, kept begging uh, for them to be, you know, uh, episodes of Life with Honey that would comment on the issue. And, um, you know, and Jamie was like, no, that's dumb like that's not gonna work or whatever then finally he was like fine you can do one you know we'll see how it goes <laughs> and then I did it and he was like wow that's actually really good <laughs> and so um and so we kept it up and it, it really I think if if and when you read Shade the Changing Girl anybody out there um it, I think it really behooves you to read the Life with Honeys episodes as well because they often were commentaries on the human problem that Loma um, was kind of dealing with um, in that issue. So the, I, I kind of wanted to talk about those, those three page things. Like it was very, it was one of the things that I kind of liked about the book as well. Um, you know, in the young animal spirit where a lot of the creators who were working on it were people who, you know, the, I think, I think um, element woman appeared first in Shade Changing Girl before before she got her own series or mini series. Um, but like, did you guys have anything to do with that? I mean, obviously you said, you, you know, at this point that you, you wanted to get that, but like in the beginning part of it, they were just I three page Jamie things Coe that threw at the back. I last bunch of them. I love What's Jamie. that? The, Jamie Coe, he, he, he mm -hmm. did a mm -hmm. book over at Brown Trout. I'll find it. Hold on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, I got him to do the last bunch. Well, I can't find it. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, and he was a delight. He was amazing yeah. to work with. I think he I think he drew LePuck as the Green Lantern. I think that was his that was his big uh that was his big That's great. That was his big thing. Yeah. Um we had nothing to do with the first, I think it was the first yeah. three that were yeah. it was just this like who was these are be? unrelated stories that we're gonna do yeah. and Oh, mom. She's yeah. like, I'm watching. <laughs> hi, mom. Hello. Everybody say hi to Marley's mom. Hi, Marley's mom. Um, yeah, and then we didn't have really very much to do with it. And then once it started to be Life with Honey, I think Jamie very smartly saw it as an opportunity to um, give girls, women, an, uh, a chance to work with a DC editor and do a short story as kind of a tryout. And so I think a lot of, um, a lot of people got their sort of first sort of toe dipping into um, doing a DC comic by doing the backup at, uh, for shade. Which I, I like that too. I like the fact that, you know, Come here, bud. We're gonna while, get while Becky did all 18 covers, a covers, um, and we're going to talk about some of that, but um, the variant covers were all by amazing women like Jenny Frisson, Joelle Jones, Marguerite Savage, John Bartle, Jill Thompson. They're, I mean, all of the the variants were done by amazing women as well. That's I think one of the things that's that... Did Tula Lute do one too? Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. I think she did. I think she did. Yeah, she did. She did issue two. Mm. Then I once she said that I was wearing sweatpants, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wearing, and so I, I think Jackie that Kuhn was something stuff. that was really important to all of us is that um, is that it sort of gave uh, an opportunity for um, ladies to um, to have a have a chance to to you know sort of be brought to the forefront. I mean, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but it was still really hard for people for um, you know women to to break in. And so I think that that it was a, it was a real easy opportunity for, um, to, to, to like bring more people to the table in that way. And that didn't all spring from us. I think we all gave names, you know, of like, Oh, this person's cool. This person's cool or whatever. But, um, you know, but from, from, um, editorial as well. Mm -hmm. 
I want to take a quick sample in the minute. interiors. <laughs> exactly. I want to take a minute and just kind of look at the covers. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're so fancy. They are, right? <laughs> they're just amazing. That was my, and, that's my favorite. I love that one. This, this is one? your yeah. favorite? No, the one before. Oh, the one before? I can go With back. The birds? Yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Look, it's my, so it's my, it's my, it's my, it's my phone. It's I was wondering. <laughs> oh, it's ago. still my wallpaper. Oh. I'm never, <laughs> never getting rid of it. No. <laughs> And this is, you know, this is the thing about Becky Cloonan is that, like, I get lost in her eyes, in the eyes that she draws. And uh, I mentioned to her earlier, like, uh, the cover to By Chance or Providence is at the bottom of my stairs. So when I walk down the stairs every day, I am stuck by it. These are just amazing. That's a good one, too. Yeah, this one had that, like, scene kind of. Yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 I, I, this one, this one is special. Like, what, what, what was your inspiration on this one? Well, it's because they go to the rock show, right? Well, there's the rock show, and then after that is Los Alamos, right? But this just feels like it feels like Gerard almost would have designed something like no. this. To be, I think this was Jamie. I think Jamie, because he's a big rock guy too. Like you know, and because they go to that the rock show, and there's the atomic bomb, and it was oh, okay. sonic booms. Yeah, we keep and it on the atomic the bomb one. Yeah, yeah, it I was, love that one. This was trying to like. That's my favorite. That's a good one. It That's was always one. trying to figure out how to incorporate the madness, but also like keep doing different things with it. Um, and shade was always the center of each one. It was like something I didn't really want to depart from. Like just keep her as the. This one's got that like oil right. kind of light. It's a good know? one too. This one, this one, I think, <clears throat> if you were ever given a chance to do a cover for American Virgin, would have been a great American Virgin cover. Oh yeah, it has like an ask of American Virgin esqueness to it. And these are the two. And then we get to the woman, the women yeah. one. And so you know, these, and they all hang on, that. hang on. Shh, Oops, shh. I'm stuck. <laughs> yeah. Did you? There know? Are. There it is. Yes. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's like that scene in in Lord of the Rings when Aragorn, Aragorn kicks the helmet, and everyone's yeah. like, "Did you know?" <laughs> yes. yes. Covers light up. And we 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 plotted and planned this out. Becky well, you and told I, me that. You told yeah. me so. Yeah, it was hard. It's harder than you think it is for me. For me, it was hard. It was hard. My to brain doesn't up, work like that, that necessarily because I'm always working in like one image, like one single image, or like in comics where you're trying to tell like a sequential story. So trying to figure out. I think. I think by the end, you can see I was kind of getting like how. Yeah, it was, it was, it was flowing into it, right? Yeah, those two. These. I mean, you can't see, I'm pointing at it like you can see what I'm pointing at but it you can kind of see towards like the bottom too that I kind of figured out like how to make it look a little more organic besides just like the just um laying it yeah it's hard because you're not you know it covers you've got an individual message to get across and then you've got to connect them all like yeah <laughs> and then you've got like a weekend to do it in <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, this the 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 cover to one is 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 iconic. I think absolutely. It's but um, they're the like. So I did this today, and I put them all together, and it wasn't as easy as I was hoping it would be. It's, yeah, it's because, hard because I'm not working with all the same images because I had to grab them from places and stuff. But but it you know once I put it together and I and putting it together as a puzzle puzzle piece because I wasn't sure how they went together. It is. It was so much fun, and it's. It is amazing that you got that you were able to do that. Like, how did you do that? Did you, did you start with it? Did you put it all in one one file, or did you just? Yeah, it was kind of, kind of like them... I did one big like I did six individual thumbnails and kind of just drew them next to each other. And I was like, well, the easiest thing to do is to have the background sync up, so that way you know you can just do each individual thing, and there's no like you're not like what's that weird tangent thing in the corner oh it's a piece of paper from like issue four or whatever like it's not mm. um like i wanted to keep each cover like very much its own cover without like having it look like a montage i guess um mm -hmm. which was tricky and i think that's what at the end like i figured it out more like finally by the end of it it was it was making the madness kind of like come more to the foreground and like overlay yeah. on it, which I think I didn't really do in the beginning, but that's like hindsight, you know, like when you have this big idea and you're like, okay, here's my idea that I'm doing it. And then you got to start it and like 
you, yeah. you're not working on all these things at the same time you're doing one at a time so once you do one you kind of have to stick with that like yeah then the next one <laughs> i think I, I mean i definitely learned a lot i mean that's the most important thing right it's like if i ever did co covers that connect again i could go in with like oh i've done this before and here's what worked and here's what i would do differently this time not to say that it didn't work but i do think that um no, knowing now yeah that's that's comics too you just yeah, that's, do them right and yeah you then just you're do like, it oh, kind of works this way we'll just keep doing it <laughs> words of wisdom Next try. <laughs> i'm gonna print that out and put it just keep doing it that'll be right next to the the francavia you know put, draw and write posters oh yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. draw it right what's that um <laughs> what's what if you guys could just take a minute and, and what is your fondest memory of of doing this book um for for you know and having the team together for this long in today's world is 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 a feat you know um 18 issues with one creative team for the most part that's that that doesn't really happen very often um I mean, it does, but not not very often. So, what, what's your what's your fondest memory of, of working on Shade? You know, each of you. Uh, first. Who's going first? You are, because you talked first. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I know this is lame because it has nothing to do with actually making the book. It was when I met Cecil in person for the first time. I opened That's the awesome. door, and she's like, "I'm really excited to meet you, but I gotta get these hockey tickets." <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's um, so me. Hey, that's so that's so on brand. Tablet, like, we gotta get these seats. <laughs> yeah, if I didn't know who said that, I would know right away what they talking about. <laughs> um, I think right. oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 I'm done. Because I was, was gonna good. say, I think you know, also not uh, actually working on the book thing. But one thing that I loved doing was, um, you know, because I know how hard it is to make comics and I didn't want Marley to feel like she was alone. <laughs> so sometimes we would like Zoom and I would have a glass of wine with her while she was um, inking um, the the book so that she wouldn't feel like she was alone in the, in the process. And, and that... <laughs> To me, it was, a, I mean, I do, have not done that with anybody else. And um, it was great. It was also, amazing. Yeah. Mountains. I don't have anybody to talk to. So. Yeah. It was, it was amazing. And it really <laughs> felt fantastic. like, you know, because as a writer, I'm really aware of how labor intensive the, the art is. And I just wanted Marley to really feel like she was really supported and that I was really there with her um, for the book. That was a treasured. That was a treasured memory for me. Oh, it was very, it was, it is intense. And yes, it was, but the collaborative aspect of this book made it, you know, like I was so dedicated. Yeah. Just, you know, just based off of like, every, it really felt like a team. And because we all communicated in our own ways too. Like me and yeah. Kelly shared Dropbox. Like, and we, mm -hmm. we I was, I, we, we were emailing back and forth. We went and saw cats together when we were in, we, we went to the cat cafe in San Diego when we met for the first time. <laughs> you like, said that and I was like, we did not see the musical not together. The what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different picture in my head. Of what <laughs> <laughs> that where, it was started one way and then it went the other way. <laughs> Neither was bad. It's just Neither was bad. Yeah. See, in the end, uh, you're in the cat cafe, but you're both dressed up as cats, like cats from the musical. Oh <laughs> in my head. <laughs> this I'm is headcanon now. <laughs> I really just like being a part of the team because I've known Cecil, like, I've known you for God, like, how? Since 2006? It's been wow. quite yeah. Time. Yeah. And my yeah. first, my first Comic-Con that I went to is when I met you. You were doing, and I think that was my second Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, and and we we began our tradition of walking the floor. Like me and me and Becky, we always um, we have this tradition where arm in arm we do a promenade. We, yeah, we take a turn around the con. turn around the con, and we do every single aisle together. Yeah, it's great. We haven't done it in a bit, but no, because you know things things happened. Things but happened. we'll get back. 
We'll get yeah. back to it. That's been my uh, favorite. And Marley, I've known your work for it seems like forever since like we've known. Yeah, we've been in like the same because well, like we've forums. Been, I've known you from forum always, days. Like, you know, <laughs> and I've known your. I, I, I had all the Im issues of demo. Like I was working in a comic shop in like two thousand one. So I was yeah. like, you know bringing it in like give me the, give me more Becky. <laughs> that's when I that's when I met you was demo. That was yeah. Yeah, that was back way back yeah. in the day. Yeah. But I, it's just cool to be like on a team where you're friends with everyone and you're a fan of everyone and just mm -hmm. being like I'm just happy to be here, man, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's definitely like the vibe I think I brought to this project. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think Becky, you and I you know, because we did spend time together, like, um, you know, I think, uh, like, I fondly remember, uh, you know, being at um, Tula's house with you, and we kind of plotted out what the covers were going to be for Shade the Changing Woman. We were like, yeah. okay, we're going to do this, and we, you know, this is what kind of what the story is going to be. Okay, I could do, you know, she's lounging, or the heart, or, you know, whatever. It was and, it's yeah. so rare to have a, a collaboration where you actually get together with the other collaborators in person. Yes. Like, while on the book or before you're working on the book like there's something there that like adds like a tangible quality to the work that you produce because it you feel something different when you actually have like that contact that human interaction and not yeah. to say that like any of my other books are lesser because i didn't have that yeah. but that it does the whole young animal thing felt like a big team right like it we, really did. we we met each Super other good different scenarios like uh, North Carolina, New York. And then we all went to England. We all went to England together. That was just a blast. <laughs> and, and I think that co that comes from the top down, you know, I mean, that's why, I mean, I really think that like Gerard was the captain of oh, that yeah. young animal ship. And like, even though we weren't working on Mother Panic or Doom Patrol or Cave Carson, I mean, John and Jody and Gerard and like, all, you know, Nick and like all those people were part of our family. Like we, Young Animal was a family, you know? Yeah. Like Tanya is one of my best buddies now. Yeah. That's, that's uh, yeah. Nick's wife. Like we, we, we were plotting a trip to Catalina at some point. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Come with us, Becky. Come I with will. us. I don't have to ask. Just say where we're going and when and I'm there. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. Nick, Tamara, and I um, were pretty good friends, too. And during yeah. it, we did, like, a colorist page exchange to kind of promote uh -huh. the other books at Young Animal, um, where we would, like, I colored a page of Cave Carson. And, uh -huh. yeah, like, it was really fun. And then, like, you're, you guys have been talking about, like, the dedication and everything of, like, what was like feeling like a family and everything. And we had, like, a, a Young Animal dinner thing. Yeah. And we did like the panels at San Diego and that was awesome. Um, yeah. And then the, the thing I remember, which is really weird is I don't even remember what issue it was, but at one point we were working up really close to the deadline and I was getting tattooed. <laughs> and I remember being like, I got the flats back from my flatter. Like I'm emailing while my leg was getting tattooed. <laughs> and I yeah. just remember like it was, like I've got to do this because it was such a like a passion project and it was so freeing because we could do all these crazy things that you don't see in comics very often these days you know yeah we're that was it was fun it was and I think yeah and I think also that trust kind of went to the point where um when we were doing the milk wars um you know, the writers, we all got together at Gerard's house and had this summit meeting, um, you know, and, you know, because we were going to do the Milk Wars. And I had been told to prepare a Green Lantern pitch for Shade because that was um, what I was assigned. So that's why I had set up Lepak to be a Green Lantern because I was supposed to do this Green Lantern thing. And then and then we arrived there and um, and they're like, oh, yeah, now you have to present, but it's Wonder Woman. And I had <laughs> no, like no prep <laughs> at all. And, but I had to stand in front of this chalkboard and write <laughs> down my ideas for what it was going to be. And you can't do that with a group of people unless you're family and you can like, you can make, you can just sort of like be like, whatever, here I am. 
<laughs> Everything's <laughs> hanging out everywhere. And I'm just going to come up with a thing. And that was when I pitched Wonder Wife. And I was like, yes. And she's suckling a dust buster. And like, you know, whatever. And that was just me like writing things down because I'd been literally told Steve Orlando who was like running the room for us was like, yeah, now you've got Wonder Woman. You have to throw everything that you came up with out. And I was like, whoa. But it ended up being, I think that Wonder Wife shade and Wonder Woman thing is one of the things that I'm most proud of because it is just so bonkers. And um, yeah. that came, that came literally from me being like, you know, <laughs> like spotlight on go. And um <laughs> And Gerard loved it. Gerard was like, yes, Wonder Wife. <laughs> it's the stuff agree. that you can only really do in comics, you know, where it's like the weirder, like the more emotive, crazy, psychedelic, you know. Didn't didn't Wonder Wife also have a Frank Quitely cover? Yes, which can is the just, most brilliant thing in the world. Can just take a moment? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what? Oh, my God. And then at Thought Bubble, I didn't even know I was sitting next to him because he uses oh, yeah. a different name, you know, when, when he's, you know, his, pers his person. Yeah, he's got a pen name. Yeah. And I, and I was just sitting next to this super nice guy. And then he was like, oh, yeah, I just did your cover. And I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> like, it was amazing. And I think the great thing, too, I think the thing, one of the things I'm most proud of in comics is the uh, doing the the Hall of Mothers uh, where there's a statue in front where there's just water coming out of <laughs> this woman's <laughs> breast. And I can't believe to this day that, um, that, that, that got through, but it did. And I am very proud of it. Oh yes, Thank you, Annika. I, well I, I will, I will say that I miss young animal. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, yeah. and, and that was um, a fun friend. It, it's you did it. yeah you opened it you know you guys talking about this was <laughs> oh. was really really inspiring um and it's something that you, you if i were to ask any other group of care hi jack hi. <laughs> hello say hi no you just want my phone no yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you asked you know, if I ask this question to any other group of creators who worked on a group on a book together, even as long as you did, I don't think I would have gotten that type of a response about the the amount of 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 family and 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 now Sophie has joined us. Hello. Hi. <laughs> she is your mini me. Oh yeah, I copy pasted this one. <laughs> yeah. I think that is bob is that we love each other and um that was a really special magical time and i think it forever bonded us mm -hmm. and um i think one thing that i'm really really proud of is that marley and i knew how we wanted the story to end um we, we asked for 12 issues to, fin to complete that story they couldn't guarantee us 12 issues. And Marley and I said, okay, if you can only guarantee us six, we're going to finish it in six and then, and then, and then we're done. And I think that there's a lot of um, pride in that because we didn't leave any loose ends. We, yeah. we got to tell the exact story that we wanted to tell. Yes. When I look back at it, is that last issue a little bit rushed? And do I wish I had like, you know, <laughs> three or four more pages? Yeah. Always, if, always. If, if only it could have been a, you know, 48 page uh, last issue, which I begged for, by the way. But, um, but, I, <laughs> but the thing is, is that I, I think that it's also really rare that, you know, you get to say, yeah, okay, you can't guarantee that we're going to be able to tell the story that we want to tell. We're going to we're going to walk away after 6 and finish where we want to finish. And yeah. I think that 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 I think that's also what makes this book really special. Yeah, especially back then it was so common to have the rug pulled out from under you on a book and it, they're like, "Oh, you have like two more issues to finish it up or something." Uh -huh. you, you don't know, you know, so you're always kind of like on this it's like you're sitting on a stick of dynamite kind of thing. Ooh. It's like you don't know how much like I have to be able to wrap this story up in an, in an issue if I have to. So you yeah. always have that in the back of your mind. I mean, that's just like the that's like the, the the thing about licensed books is you always have to be happy 
like you have to learn how to be happy with the story that you're able to tell. And like this, if you're able to go in ahead of time and prepare that ending and be like, this is, this is the story that we're going to tell and we can walk away happy from it. I mean, that's the best thing in the world to walk away from a book and feel like you are pleased with what you left. Um, yeah. Especially when you dedicated years of your life to this story and this collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. It does, and I, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's a bittersweet. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. And I think that Marley and I left it as such. My dream um, was that if you know what the ending of Shade the Changing Woman is, my dream is that then somebody else will pick up the mantle one day and it will be Shade the Changing and that that is the new thing. And I still think, I, I think it will happen one day. And, Ugh. um, you know, and I, I think, um, I think that, you know, I think that it is, it is waiting to be discovered, um, by people. Um, I, I, I have full faith that it is some amazing creators favorite book from their teenage years. And when they become super big, you know, in 20 years from now, they will, cite it. I mean, like, I think it's got, it's, it's, it still has legs. It's just, um, I hope people discover it. Yes. Well, when you I hope so. first told me your plans for the, the final arc that didn't get made, I got goosebumps. And when you just said it just now, I got goosebumps again. It's seriously like it's, it's a travesty yeah, <laughs> that a travesty. it didn't get to happen. But yeah. it does but it's like there. in the universe. Uh, and it's also, it's there. It is. Yeah, it's, it's there. right there. Uh, uh, I, again, I, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this book. I'm a huge fan of all of you. I thank you. I can't thank you enough for, for doing this. I, I want to talk a little bit about um, the industry and, 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 and yourselves in it. You know, it, it, part, reason, part of the reason why I kind of, you know, put these together, it is Women's History Month and we're talking about women in comics and, you know, our previous, the pre previous two episodes have been women who are a little bit older than, than you guys. Um, and when, one of the questions I asked them, which wasn't there, but you guys are out of a different generation. Were there women working in comics that you guys admired growing up that were inspirations to you? Yeah. Jill Thompson first yeah. was probably like, I think the most visible for me. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in like a small town in New Hampshire. So there was like a comic store and I, I was lucky that the guys at the comic store who worked there would always pull things aside for me that they thought that I would like, or try to get me into something or other. But um, Jill was one of the first, I think that I was like, this is, I mean, her work is just incredible um on the invisibles and just yeah um there wasn't many though no um, and i i read a lot of manga and i think yes you guys might be in the same, same. <laughs> where i i discovered when i discovered that like Rumiko takahashi was a woman i was like oh mm -hmm. my god she's yeah. like, <laughs> that's she, incredible hey. and Clamp. Sam Right? That's, yeah, that's Sailor cool. Moon. When I discovered Clamp was like a studio of four women. Oh my god, <laughs> Clamp like, kills me. I was like, Clover was like, like my jam as a. Yeah. It, in my head, I was like, "That's I want. I want that. I want a studio, and I want like three other women. We're gonna like move in together, and we're gonna just make comics all the time." Didn't quite happen like that, but I do feel like, like we we got there with yeah. shade. <laughs> that's fantastic. For, I mean, it's, it's a different. <laughs> I think there was a conversation like some controversy, like why is comics, you know, or why is manga taking hold where, you know, American comics aren't or whatever, Barnes and Noble, somebody doing something. It's just that it's true. We're, you, you know, I, I think you're or Gen X and elder millennials. Like we, we got into comics and when we did, we were just like, Oh man, look at manga. Like we've got access points. Like, Look at this. This is a studio of girls. Oh, cool. This is content I want to read. It was like that in Vertigo. And that was. Yeah. And I think that's why Shelly started Minx, right? Because yeah. of the manga stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say for me, I was really I was lucky. I still the image boom, but I think I fell off. And after, like, as soon as I hit puberty, I was like, a oh, manga and, and Vertigo. Yeah, for me it was X Men and manga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me it was like uh, Vertigo, Love and Rockets, but then also 
I was here in Montreal. That's cooler than all of us. Though, <laughs> I was here in <laughs> I was here in Montreal where um, uh, I was working at a co-op cafe where a guy named Chris Oliveros was dreaming up a. Uh, um, a new uh, comic book company uh, called Drawn and Quarterly. And um, uh, so he was having a lot of live comic jams here in Montreal. So, you know, where there would be like Seth and like, you know, uh, uh, the yummy fur guy, Chester Brown and, you know, whatever. But for me, also Julie Doucette. And um, and then I was also obsessed with Roberta Gregory, um, Naughty Bits. That was like, that was my... Jam. So I think but for me, like Julie Doucette and, and Roberta Gregory were kind of like my my North Stars for what I thought comics could be like. I I also uh, I got was really into like the slave labor graphic stuff when I was like 11, 12. Um, it was like my access point kind of into Western comics because I started completely in manga. And um, Serena Valentino, she did a like a very long series called Gloom Cookie, and I had all of those and read all of those. I remember that on an Elf Quest. And was anybody Wendy Penny? Like, oh, so yeah. I mean, those, those Elf Quest books. Yeah, I feel like I read them when I was too young to read them. Yeah, it's too young. <laughs> But they are. <laughs> they spicy. So I will. I will tell you two. I want to. I want to kind of come in on two things. One is, so Wendy Peeney was the first woman that I recognized as a creator that was a woman. Like it was the first. I remember reading that, and I'm like, this is written and drawn by a woman. I I love this, okay. and I was ten. <laughs> I was, and I was reading the. I was reading the, the epic, run when the first when the when they were reprinting everything. So it was eighty four. I was like 12, 14, 12 or 14, somewhere in that range. And that was ElfQuest is the first book that I evangelized to somebody. We had a, there was a woman, we had a boarder living with us. It was, it was a, an adult woman. And I'm like, you know, you would really like these comics. And, and she's like, and she read it and she was like, she, you know, she was not a comic book reader. She wasn't, you know, she, but I, you know, I was reading everything possible at the time. And I'm like, and she loved it. She read them all. She it was the first. I felt I felt so good. Like I I I taught somebody else to like comics. Um, <laughs> That's but, such a good feeling. But the other thing is that kind of Marley said was, you know, I completely understand where your generation didn't get image. I had a conversation with some other people who are of a different well, gender. I what? <laughs> right, but I did read Spawn and Wildcats. I had all the Danger Girls too. <laughs> yeah, I did read Danger Girl. I was I left Wildcats when Jimmy started drawing it, yeah. and I was like Travis Charest. Oh, right. pronounce his name because oh, I was from like, New Hampshire. Uh, I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> he can't draw like Jim Lee. Yeah. <laughs> oh what? Oh yeah. Like but remember when they did the reboot with what with Travis Charis on it's it? So, like, he's so good. That was oh. like my 13 year old. I was like such a yeah, like a pure pure. Oh, thank yeah. god I didn't have the internet back then. I would have probably written some <laughs> stupid tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Travis you. guy? <laughs> I want Jim Lee back. Yeah, what? <laughs> didn't know how good I had it. <laughs> But that's that. I mean, like I said, that there, I, I, and I understand that. But like, there, it's easy. It was. It's an. It was yeah. not as easy a, an access for okay. for young girls. Um, well, in, yeah. in that, in that. There's like, yeah. I, I mean, the, if you want your 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 expanded content, you're gonna. Your manga has like stories about football. Like you're you're gonna find anything and everything you want in like you know th that's because their their creation process is a lot faster and a lot you know i mean they they have teams working together you know pumping out work and man they work insane schedules too so yeah. uh and it's also like, it, right? it's, it's like it's it's like a, even, yeah yeah people read comics casually over yeah. there it's not yeah. like you you, it's about. not like People will just be like, "Oh, I'm just on the on the train and I'm reading some comics." Yeah. But I'm, you're not like a mega fan. It's just something that you do casually. Like yeah. everyone does it, or most people do anyway. And here, it, it seems like if you do, you do. And that's it's what, more it of a niche thing. It becomes and people more of your are more personality. Like, 
Yeah, and it's more like mega fandom, I think. Yeah, like people get it's it. an unfortunate thing where they give you a pat on the back for going into the comic book store where all the guys are and going and getting <laughs> books. And it's just kind of like it, it, people, it, it, you know, some of the stores are guilty of it, but uh, like, you know, there's some owners who have some really cool stores too. But it just, you know, it built up that thing around it that kind of kept people out of the stores, fortunately. And then they didn't make it super accessible <clears throat> and at Barnes and Noble and stuff like that until now. I think I dodged a lot of that because being French, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, you had like access to all the cool like Bon Days and Day and like Montreal's yeah. like yeah. You know, you get it like the the week after it comes out in France. Yeah, the week the week after you're born, they just yeah. give you a mix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I dodged most of that because I just didn't live in cities. I lived in the middle of nowhere. So. <laughs> yeah. Or no. Yeah. 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 Our industry is magical. <laughs> well, you know, part, one of the questions I have here, and this is kind of, um, what would you, what advice would you give to young women, especially young women who want to be part of the comics industry now? You know, who, who what is, what is the advice you, you would give to people, especially women? Young women? That's what I want to say. Like, so now, you know, you, you're, you're all, um, adults and you have done amazing things in this industry and should be extremely proud of the things you've done. But if someone's coming up, what would be the things you would say to them? I mean, I think it's so different now than it was like, you know, when, when I started, um, or, you know, like when I met Becky, right. In 2006, it's just, it's just so different now. And I think that like, there are so many more young women creators. I almost feel like I would ask them like, Hey, what, what, how do you make comics? Like, what do you do? What do you do? Because I think that they're just, they're, you know, I know I teach at a school in Denmark and I think the next class that I'm teaching, there's, there's no boys in it. It's just, it's like 20 young women, you know, or female identity. If I, I mean, it's just women. And so, um, uh, so I think I think that that question isn't really sort of relevant anymore. I think like Good. you can kind of, you know, because Good. I think it's just more that. like it's more like what are the practicalities of the business of making comics? You know, what are your tools? You know, what is your marketing strategy? What you know, how, you know, where do you go for support if there's a problem? Um, um, things like that. I mean, it, it's still there's still a long road to go. And, you know, I'm sure we've all got our our tails. I certainly do. Um, mm -hmm. but, um, but I, I, I do think that, um, that there's such a shift. And when you, I think when you're talking about superhero comics and you're talking about the comics industry, that's like, you know, there's kids mm -hmm. comic, oh. it's a totally, mm -hmm. it's a totally different, different thing. And I think we tend to ask that question of women who are going into superhero comics. And that's a very different thing that I would tell, a, a young woman going into superhero comics um, than I would telling a young woman going into comics in general, like, you know, writing graphic novels or YA. Yeah, or even like webtoons or something. Yeah. Which they're mm -hmm. so popular and it's so many women are making them. Oh yeah. And it's like, it, at this point, it's like in my periphery, like it's not even something that I completely understand or have delved into a hundred percent. But I know it's there and I'm, I'm impressed by it. I think, I would say to anybody is don't let anyone else determine your worth mm -hmm. as a creator. Um, if you get rejection or if you get, if you, you know, if you suffer setbacks, which we all have stories, mm -hmm. everyone has a story. <laughs> Everyone's oh. been burned. Don't let that. Um, it's okay to feel bad, but also um, don't let it stop you from doing the next thing. And the other thing is that um, really just, I think the biggest hurdle is your own mind, you know? It's like fear is the mind killer and you have to <laughs> get over that and just dive in and just make the comic. Like right now, I haven't drawn comics in years because I got super burnt out. And so I started writing more and that's why you saw me writing all these things. And now I'm like feeling it again. I ha I'm drawing a comic, I'm drawing many comics. I got, I started drawing again in like January and I had this moment of hubris when I took on all this work and now I'm like, suffering <laughs> consequences. Uh, um but 
I, I'm so nervous to start drawing again, you know, but yeah. that's like all in my head. It's like, you have to just get over yourself yeah. and <laughs> start drawing again. So I'm saying this to people who are just starting out, but I also am saying it to myself so I can like heed my own advice. Just draw the thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> I've, I've been, been I've, I've had two kids and I haven't been able to do interiors. Um, I did the in, odd interior. Like I did a, a short for the Superman. Was it red and blue? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That was so yeah. good by the way. Good. The short for that. But I mean, you, you feel like you're like, can I even draw anymore? Yeah. But you just kind of have to, you, you can't get caught up. You, you have to go for like, turn it in, get it done and move on. Yeah. And that's the hardest part is doing the first <clears throat> bit, the, the first, like, you know, it, your first comic, you're going to look back on and kind of be like memories, but you're also going to be like, yeah, it sucked. But you're going to be bury it. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. You have well, a, a little fun memory, but then you, you just keep kind of, yeah, you just keep burying it in more work and. You know, you'll come back to things and be like, yeah, I did all right on that one like three years ago. And, you know, it's just kind of, yeah, almost, and don't feel like you, you're going to be super proud of everything you put out immediately. And it's going to be the best thing you've ever done in your entire life. And you're going to be, yeah, no, hey, you're growing, you're growing your career is what you're doing and you're growing your craft. And, and I, Oh, forgive yourself for, for, for not doing your best sometimes. <laughs> That's huge. But you got it done. <laughs> and I'm also going to say, you know, I, my advice to anybody, young woman, young man, young person, um, is, you know, what are you giving back to our industry as well? What is your literary citizenship? What is your comic book citizenship? You know, how are you lifting other people? You know, like with shade, you know, we put forth like the names of many, um, artists to draw those backup stories and stuff like that. You know, how are you contributing to making our industry a more, you know, welcoming and inclusive space? Because for such a long time, you know, especially superhero comics it is a, is a, a not so welcoming, you know, or wasn't. That's changing, but, you know. I think I'd also. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go, 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 sit. No, 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 no. I'd also say like, it's not just your, your mind too. Like part of that is like of taking care of yourself is like allowing yourself to sleep, allowing yourself to like actually take care of yourself and not just working 24 seven because you will get burnt out. It will long-term, <laughs> your health will long-term suffer from it, from it's hours weird. of not sleeping <laughs> ever. <laughs> Um, so it's like taking care of yourself in the long term versus, you know, just saying yes to everything and then just fizzling, you know, yeah. later on down the road. Yeah. Learning to say no is really, really hard. Uh, oh God, I still again, I say this all to myself too. <laughs> super hard. Um, like I, I, when I had my first, uh, had Jack, right. My first kid. I was like, yeah, in eight months, I'm going to be on interiors for this book, this project, which I was super excited for. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to kill it. Nope. I had, to, I had to quit it. Like, I had to say no. And, like, you just have to know yourself, right? And, like, what you're capable of and what you need time for. Like, you can't sit 10 hours behind a desk. You know, no, 10 hours oh my is God. a little low, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're saying this and I'm like, I just spent the past seven weeks yeah. doing nuts yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah, nuts yeah. hours will, will, it, it, hurt, it really hurts you like health wise too. Like, it does. It, it does. It'll, it'll drain you, but yeah. I don't know. Sorry. Went on it. <laughs> I think that was all. I think those were all great, great advice. We're just giving I, ourselves a box here. <laughs> that's okay. Just so you know, on, there's like a pile of money, like right here, <laughs> for when that little Becky graphic novel gets made because I love little Beckys. And oh. the more you do them, I did. I want, I like, you know, like a whole, like, like a month in little, little Becky's life would just be fantastic. So boring. It would be so boring. It is not. <laughs> Let me tell you. It is. Like today I'm writing, they, today like I'm the drawing. perfect bedtime book. It'll just put you to sleep. It is. <laughs> and it, I there's drew nothing again. but joy in my life when I'm flipping my Instagram feed and I see little Becky. I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> well, I'm what glad. They, I feel you know, they talk about they're, like doing reality did they ever do a comic book like version of a reality tv show where they were just following like 
comic people around making comics. Yes, oh my it God. caused an explosion <laughs> and people died. <laughs> well, I would just be, it would just be watching like. I there's actually um, Man Ben in Japan. I don't know if you guys. It's Naoki Urasawa who does Twenty Century. Yeah. 20th oh, century yeah, I watched all of those. Those are really they're good. so good. If if you haven't watched Man Ben, go on YouTube and find some like. If you need English subs, like put them on. Like what? It's they they put. Um, so he's this incredible manga artist, and he's such I a fan. Yeah, yeah. He like yeah. they put um, cameras in like manga artists house and their studios what? and stuff mm -hmm. and you just sit and you watch and draw and then a week later he interviews them so he sits down with them and they talk about all the footage and they talk about their process and they talk about their influences and what inspires them and it's like if you uh -huh. want to want to draw watch an episode of man ben and you will come out of it you'll be like i love comics <laughs> I, I feel like i've been in like a, a hole i haven't heard of this thing I yeah you gotta watch it that's it's okay. really good yeah. yeah. I do have Thank a funny anecdote about <laughs> comic book reality show though. They they were there was someone from MTV when I was when I lived in New York, I was working at a studio mm -hmm. in Gowanus, and someone came through and they were there was like three cartoonist studios in the building that it was like an old warehouse building. And they were like, We want to do like a reality TV show or like shoot a pilot or something for it. And they're like, if you don't want to be involved in this at all, don't come in to work tomorrow, just work at home. And I was like, well, easy. Like, we'll just work at home. It turns out every woman in who was working in the studio, none of them came in. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes. Because <laughs> we all know how that goes. <laughs> That's a, yeah. yeah. That's a big no for me. <laughs> the modern equivalent is just, like, not turning on the video feed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I kind of miss having a studio. Yeah, I miss and people. Yeah, I miss yeah, yeah, has changed so much <laughs> yeah. of everything. I think of like how we all live and how we all work too, and just how the industry has changed so much too. I like, I so like, like seven dudes. That's, that's like awesome and awful. But uh, we all uh, learned like that. You know, we all kind of grew off of each other, drawing wise. But, yeah. No. Yeah. I miss next time we do this in real life. Yes. So a live sounds great. live recording. That sounds great. I, I had that conversation, you know, I had that thought today. I was thinking about how how comics used to be made and how the whole concept of the bullpen and, and people drawing in the studio in the offices and and putting everything together by hand and how that how that is what that must have been like. I can't even imagine just, just the way that I know the how the industry and how comics are made today. Um, it depends. It'd be fun and awful, depending on. Uh, it was, I think. It, <laughs> um, I think it was a lot of awful, and some fun, but. Um, I can't imagine like doing hand coloring, honestly. But, oh I yeah. See, you should have come on the coloring thing. We had we had Anthony Tallin on, and he was talking about, and and him and Paul Mounts went crazy, it's talking cool. about it. He, he talked I a mean, lot I about, have color guides. I have a shade color guide that I bought. He, we talked a lot about Adrian Roy too, and 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 the hundred and eighty something straight issues of Batman that she colored to my hand. Dang. Jesus, you're coming so, on next year. Okay, we're doing it again. I will. I'll come on next year for sure. <clears throat> so, and the hand lettering, hand let. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, that, Jim hand. My my husband does comics too, but yeah, like he, I don't know how he does it. I can't do it. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah, no. I, I kind of want to get a little nerdy because you know, um, that's what we do. Um, what? And this is a question I kind of ask people, so I kind of want to see what you guys think. You can go two ways. This question can be answered two ways. What is the oldest comic that you own, or, <laughs> or what is the first comic you remember reading? Uh, I the first comic I ever read, and it is also maybe the. Well, I don't know if it's the oldest comic that I own, but I still have part of it because the cover fell off. Um, it was a Silver Surfer annual from 1988. It was annual number one. It was with um, Silver Surfer, 
fights like the Super Scroll and like Mantis is in it and like the old Nova is in it. And my dad read it to me as like a bedtime story because he was a big ah. Silver Surfer fan. So That's like it. at a very young age, I knew like the whole history of like the Kree Scroll War and like intergalactic politics. Like, <laughs> like it was actually happening. Awesome. I still love Silver Surfer, um, but all those old um, Surfer comics are so good. Uh, definitely like left um, like a mark on me creatively. I think so. It's uh, like his the, the tragic romance of like Norman Rad and Shalabal, like I'll always. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's a. Uh, it's I can picture it in my like every panel. Like I know it by heart because I read it so many times. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. It was comic uh, I <laughs> owned. I think one of my oldest. Well, no, I, see, I can't remember exactly the oldest, but. Um, like I have that pull out that X Men Blue Team, uh, you know the 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 famous one, your Jim Lee pull out. But that's not the one that I was obsessed with. The one I was obsessed with was the one with um, it was the Andy Kubert one, and it has Psylocke and Revanche. Oh <laughs> yes. Guy. Literally, like if you if you look at you can see it's embossed because I traced it so many times. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was the Jim Lee uh, X Men number one, the four fold out one. Yeah, I had that one. And that there was like a Wolverine that I like traced over so many times. I was, I was on swim team, so the humidity killed that thing like immediately. Like it was off the stapler, like within <laughs> a week. But like the one, yeah, the Andy Kubert ones. Like I, like, you know, everybody has the the. the but I swear to God, that one is. If I could find it, it's embossed. It's hilarious. Like that's my. Yeah, that whole Revanche saga was my, I loved it. So good. It's so good. I mean, yeah. for me, the first comic I remember reading is um, my, my, I was obsessed with the um, Adam West Batman show. And so for my fourth birthday, my dad bought me the Golden Age um, Batman and Superman omnibuses like that they put out in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so those are the first comics that I remember so I couldn't even read I would just like stare at the pictures and they were very important to me but the, the currently I don't know where those are but the the oldest comic that I have is probably like the first comic that I bought when I was like seven um was Tintin you know it was mm -hmm. you know just like you know I want to say it was like secret of the unicorn or so, you know, something, you know, it was one of the tin tin books and, and all of my tin tin books, like I have them all and they're like cover is, I used to sleep with them under my pillow. Like, yeah. you know, they, you know, they're just like the, the, the cardboard cover is cracked and like binding is falling off and well, I threw up on them. You know, <laughs> like. How about you, Kelly? For me, I was just looking to see what the actual name of the comic was the, for the oldest one is so um, there's a comic shop in Portland called uh, Books with Pictures and um, Douglas Wolk, he has like a little section in the shop where he puts in like weird old comic back issues that are like his favorite and he puts a little like sticky note on them like explaining kind of what they are. And I found, he was like, you gotta, you gotta get this one. And it was uh, Critters number 23 from <laughs> Fanagraphics, hear me out. And it has like a floppy vinyl record in it that has like Alan Moore on it. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like the weirdest comic I own, but it also came out in 88, which was the year I was born. Um, and that's probably the oldest comic I have, like, for age wise, but I think the first like floppy comic that I remember buying was probably Pokemon, and that's really showing my age. That's so, all right. Because they were they were <laughs> releasing. Um, oh my gosh, who was Look, doing they were it? still coming out in the nineties. You know how old we are to people now? It's ridiculous. Yes, I know, and, <laughs> and I'm I'm think I'm the youngest one here. Um, yeah. And they, I I can't remember who put them out, but it was. They they were like the well, the manga. It was Viz. It was Viz. Yeah. yeah. The, they were releasing them in like 
single issues. And yeah. that was like Those one of the first the times. I remember. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was one of the first times I ever went into like a comic shop was to buy like Pokemon cards and then buy the comics. And I bought a couple of like Sailor Moon comics that way too. Um, mm-hmm. And then my sister's friend had a bunch of Sonic up. comics. Rumi what? Top, like Ranma in one half and uh, like. Yeah. Mason and Cuckoo, I, yeah. the Mermaid Saga, like all those, they, they all came out in yeah, Inuyasha. I yeah. have a ton of Inuyasha. So and good. then uh, the Blade of the Immortal was what was my hook. Yeah, oh, I have wait. some of those too, yeah. That book is yeah. incredible. I was going back and rereading Blade. some of those recently, and I was, because I'm like drawing again, so I was trying to go okay. through and like find all the stuff that like really got me inspired when I was younger. Um, and... Girl, it's all in Japanese. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, you have like the, the oh my god. The actual like uh, <laughs> oh. graphic novels like yeah. <laughs> I think oh yeah and Vampire Princess Mew and Naushka they I got, got those in single oh, issues yeah. as well. They like them. not like the thick ones but like the actual oh, floppies. Yeah, yeah. That was a good time for comics. Yes. It really was. Yeah. It was a bad time, but it was also like kind of a good time. It was a good time yeah. for Japanese comics. I mean, like Akira. <laughs> Akira? Come on, like I, uh, yeah. I remember as soon as I wor- started working in the shop, I was like, I'm getting the trades. <laughs> yeah, those colored Akira volumes are like yeah. uh, uh, the DH ones with the yeah. crazy sound effects. <laughs> that was so. Those also were some of the first ones that. Um, I found of like Steve Olaf of like him coloring. Mm-hmm. Those, those so are crazy. Good. Yeah. Oh, good. They're so I hard to find one. now. I wish I they would reprint them all. That he did for Akira. Yeah, I bought I bought two pages of his colors. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I've got like weird nerdy color stuff. Let me know if like, you were selling them. Huh? <laughs> so let me know if you were selling them. <laughs> like, just come to my weird color Whoa. museum. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, <clears throat> that new Otomo thing that because you know how they have the the I, I, i'm not gonna talk too much take up too much time i'm sorry <laughs> i i, I want to tell you that i feel like marlon from uh from finding nemo because like i know you're trying to talk to me but i, I don't and but but by the same token, I am this 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 show has turned out to be everything I expected it to be. I'm so glad you guys <laughs> have gotten together and, and to bring you guys together to talk about this stuff because it's all important. It doesn't matter whether anybody. It doesn't matter that I don't. I didn't read those things. The fact that you read them, that they meant something to you, that they're that this medium speaks to people in 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 multiple different ways is what makes is why I love the medium. You know, like I said, we were, you know, the the. Early image stuff was not my jam. It wasn't, but but Vertigo was there, mm-hmm. and, and that was, you know, um, mm-hmm. and, and that as I was growing, as I, you know, I was hitting adulthood at that point, and that that took that was the my uh, it allowed me to grow and continue to read the the medium that I wanted to become mm-hmm. more adult with it. Um, what. What is the thing about comics that keeps you guys doing it? What it why 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 do you why do you why do you why are you here? I can say you could. <laughs> I was telling you right now. I, I understand. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean I for me it's the collaboration. It's the collaboration. It's just the best. It really is. It's like you know, obviously when I write a novel, I'm all by myself and I'm the goddess of the world and I can pick anything and make You're my own choices. And, well, thank you. But, <laughs> um, but when you make a comic, like when I made, you know, when we made shade, like Marley and I had long conversations about the story and about, about shade and about river and about teacup and about, about everybody, you know, and those were really meaningful conversations. And I continue that with, you know, with everything else, you know, with female furies, with, you know, plain Janes, with, um, uh, you know, shifting at earth, whatever, whatever I do, it's like, I'm always talking with the artists that I'm collaborating with about the story. And you, you know, and you learn from that collaboration, how to make the book better. 
And um, you don't get that when you're doing your thing all on your own. And for me, I think it's like why Gerard and I were like, yeah, comics is like being in a band because when you jam and you, you create a song together, everybody's needed, you know, you have to have the art, the pencils, the colors, the writing, the editor, the covers, like everything has to come together. Yeah. I love the collaborative aspect too. I love, I like translating it into the comp, like into the, it's just, I love doing layouts. I love layouts. They're like my favorite thing to do ever. So it's, you know, you get your story and you're making that story, you know, on, you're doing the acting, you're doing the, you know, and then we're, we're discussing it and figuring out like how, you know, how, how am I going to emote this scene? What is people feeling? Like, it's just, it's, it's great. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. There's I, something about telling a story yeah. that like you get, it's, there's a point like I love, I think I love every bit of the process and I hate every bit of the process in <laughs> equal amounts. Like there's things I can find to love about it. And there's things that like keep me up at night, but there's like a point in with comics that you get where it's like, it's almost like you reach like a fever pit. And I've, you know, of course it's so weird because we've all done art and writing and things as like a, an, a, an escapism as a kid, you know, and now we've made it our living and it's like curses. Upon yeah. us. <laughs> How do we deal with this? Um, but it's finding that route to getting back to like, what did I love so much about this? Like, yeah. I, the kid doing it and like get trying yeah. to get that energy back and becoming obsessed with like your characters and like thinking about them all the time. And like, it becomes real. And then you just get, you know, it's like you're in your head again. Like it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. And knowing that you can like, transport someone else there and give someone else a feeling like when I'm drawing or when I'm thinking of a story, like I have a feeling. And whenever I do a comic, I always think about the last, like the end first, because I want to be like, what's, what do I want to like give, leave the readers with? Cause I think that's one of the most important things. So knowing that aspect of it is like, um, to, it just helps me like get through the book, but it's knowing that I'm like imparting something on someone else and whether that's good or bad, like maybe I feel really evil that day and I'm like, I'm going to make a sad story. <laughs> I'm going to make someone cry. Like it, it's a, it's a nice thing to be able to share that humanity in these stories and ideas. Yeah. And you have no control over once it goes out in the world. Oh, yeah. Right. But okay. when you're in, but when you're in with your team, it's like you your team cares about it. Like, it's like, it's like, so it's like, I know for me, oftentimes when I'm writing a comic, my audience is the artist that I'm collaborating with. Like, that's who I'm writing the story yeah. for, you know? Yeah. Well, that, that, that makes it a better collaboration. It's just because you're, you know, it makes it tighter. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you, you do things solo too. Well, like, uh, you know, Becky, when you're writing and, and drawing, that's your transporting them to your world me and cecil when we're working together we have to make that into a world together mm -hmm. kind of you know yeah and kelly and, and make it color and make it pop and you know just, well like that that's like supporting the support of of me like supporting marley you know like a, of trying to like figure out her vision and Cecil's vision and like try and move things that like collaborative aspect and then the continuation of like working with other people over like long periods of time. Um, it's not only getting to like work with amazing like writers and artists and always getting inspired by like different projects, but it's also having that like each project, I always try and bring something new or try and push myself in some way creatively. And I think that just always like working with different people, different projects, different stories, it allows you to continue to grow as an artist. And like that, that growth um, is something that I'm completely addicted to is like always trying to get better and be better mm -hmm. at, at new. At, yeah. And then like, just there's so many incredible people in this industry. And I think that, you know, it's one of the few industries I, that I think is like just really special with the like where you get to collaborate and, and tell these stories and like work with so many, just like so many talented people. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's, 
it's true with, especially with what Becky was talking about, about, uh, you know, how you want to recapture that feeling when you were younger and you have those worlds that you've built for yourself and you want to drag somebody into it with you. And, but finding that joy, because we're taking our joy and turning it into a job. And yeah, that's, that's hard. Where, deep. That's it's hard, where the burn that's spark is. alive. Yeah. That's the, the you, you have to, and recapturing that is, is, yeah. I mean, for me doing like getting, getting to lay out books uh, and doing stuff. That's where I find my joy in, in my, in, in my comic and where I can kind of like, where you, where you're not, it's, it's like almost your head. You're just like, you feel comfortable. And like, you're, yeah, like, I don't know. I can't, I can't. It's like you look up and all of a sudden it's 9 PM. And yeah, you're, exactly. You're oh like, my God. <laughs> but you don't mind. Cause it's like, I had such a good day. I did every that. night, every <laughs> night at nine 30, my, yeah. <laughs> my parents have been yelling at me. Um, they're like, it's nine 30. Gotta let your dog out. And I'm like, Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every night. I wake up and it's dark. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. There's hours we'll all sit in the dark and then be like, oh, I forgot to turn the light on. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like in and and in, in comics, there's still so many stories that just haven't really been told. And being able to work with people where like even recently there's a project I just worked on that hasn't been announced yet. And it was um, a script that I read that made me cry. Um, oh, amazing. And it was because it was like one of the few times I've really seen like myself in a, in a story be told. And I'm like, I'm so lucky to work. <laughs> you know, like, and it's shade is one of those when shade was over, I cried. I'm an emotional baby. I'm very soft. <laughs> oh so, this is that's team shade though. Team shade though is like soft baby team. I I mean there's there's very few projects though that really make me that make me yes, get the, that emotional. Baby. Yes, I, I am. am soft baby. That's me. I'm baby. So many tears, <laughs> but not tears of like uh, sadness. Tears of emotions. Yes. 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 Happiness. I'll, I I did have some some, some deadline tears. That happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, deadline tears. <laughs> And then you get I them. get more like deadline stench. <laughs> That's where it goes. I, cr I cried while I writing cried. sometimes. Cry. You feel better and then you go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> I cried while writing sometimes, not because I was like frustrated, but like because I I moved myself. That's know? so that's so good. I think yeah. it's like some of the best feelings is like when you can like I know it's like you should laugh at your own jokes or whatever, but laugh at your own jokes. Like it's funny. Like, yeah. And like like enjoy these feelings because that's how I feel like everything that you put into a comic people feel it when they read it in some form or another um and maybe not everybody but someone out there is gonna feel they're oh, gonna yeah. get those tears you're gonna give it to them you know it's like it's like, like watching they'll, someone yawn you know it's, they'll even find weird easter eggs that you tucked away into the art and then bring it up to you later like yeah oh, like the you think the, people the, won't the, notice but they will they do <laughs> Yeah, they look up the YouTube video that you put on there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> serious? Like, yeah, it's it's me. They it's it, it's it that that's cool though. Like that's that makes you so happy. And then when people show up and they actually have like different types of outfits from different like issues that you've drawn, you're yeah. like, you know, it's not just the same one. You're like, oh man, you 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 like the the Sonic Booms issue, like the. <laughs> like I I've seen some cool shade cosplays. Yeah, you know? and like, the amazing. fan art was incredible. Yes. Yes. Actually, somebody somebody came up to me at at uh -huh. Emerald City, and you know, because a lot of people come up to me and they say how much. Um, Shade was the kind of book that came to them at the exact perfect time in their life. And it was the exact book that they needed, which always means so much um, to me. But um, she had she had madness tattooed on her That's arm. Oh. I will get that tattooed one day. <laughs> and that so made me that we all yeah. get like tiny little madness rings or maybe, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we all should have got the same little tattoo just to for the end of it. <laughs> I think that, hey, that's, well, 
that you know, that's like an omnibus. If you're on an omnibus, then you're just like, yeah, we have to get a team tattoo. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to put that out there. When DC <laughs> makes the omnibus, yeah. which we are, we Can will we gotta do another like, which will be overdue that. when it comes out, when they do, when they do the omnibus special edition, large oversized hard back, we're all getting a madness tattoo. Yeah. yeah. I'm in. Right. I think that's fantastic. I'll go in with that. <laughs> and it's all Kelly's fault. <laughs> <clears throat> oh my god, I've, I feel like I have too many tattoos and yet not enough. Well, you got Same. another one. That's that's <laughs> the that is exactly that's the, the problem. It's like There's, working in comics; you can't stop. I agree. Well, I can. I had two. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, I'm I'll out. I'll back in it eventually. <laughs> I have to work on a cover tonight anyway. For me, the industry, uh, uh, comics is, is a, you know, I've, I've spoken to, to a lot of you individually, and, and comics is, means a lot to me in, in that... I mean, I, I'm a soft baby too. Like I cry all the time. I, if, if a month goes by and I haven't cried at a comic book, like there was a comic book I read the other, like two weeks ago and I was crying at it and I went to tell my wife why it was so excited and why I was crying. And as I was reading it to her, I cried all over again. So it, oh. it's, and it's, it's because there's some, I don't know, something, like I don't, I don't, I read books. I don't cry. But comic books will, will do that to me They're, and they'll make me angry and they'll make me happy and they'll make me sad and they'll make me just emotional um and and i got all of those emotions from shade and that's why it should be a giant omnibus so we can all get tattoos but um <clears throat> the uh the thing about shade I, I completely understand people telling coming to you cecil and saying that this was the right book for me at the right time like it is that type of a book that is special and it has a message for people that is different and unique but also uh, universally available to to any reader uh it, it is really something that is not um <clears throat> not appreciated to the level that it should be um and i thank you all of you for for everything you did with it um for for the love and, and and effort and work that you put into putting this through putting this book out um more people need to read it um we're gonna share the sh crap out of this uh podcast so people will know <laughs> how fun it was working on it and uh and i i thank you guys for joining is it is there so cecil you're going to be at uh WonderCon this weekend? Yes? Yeah. Not this weekend? Yeah. yeah. I'm leaving oh tomorrow for Los Angeles. At six gonna, morning, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be at WonderCon this weekend. And then uh, and then if you're in Sweden, I'm going to be at the Stockholm Comic Con in May. So I want to go wow. to come and say hello. Yeah. <laughs> you know, wow. I'm, I'm, I do so many things in Scandinavia now. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> So I have done fun. stuff from when I did Uppsala a few years ago. Oh, so cool. I'm, exci I'm excited. I'm excited. And um, XL Man of War is out today, number one. With XL Man of War, day. Which is a big, big for Becky. Um, yeah. And Lee Kelly Sharp was drawing it, and Michael W. Conrad co wrote it. And I got to say, it was, uh, that's a, it's like a space opera. So nice. And so we were thinking, you know. <laughs> And Kelly, what are you, what are you, what are you working on these days? So much. So, I mean, like I, I could probably go like this and it's five of them. Okay. Well, there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on kind of behind the scenes that have been ongoing. Um, and then um, long-term reversal um, with Alex DeCampi and mm. Skylar. Oh, I always screw up her last name. Patridge. Patridge. Thank you. I always say Patridge. Um, and we might, be working on something new together too um and then uh oh my gosh something that'll probably get announced next week that's a very big project that i was doing a lot of hours on um wait let me open up my <laughs> tab on my computer oh star signs <laughs> with um saladina saladin on is it ahmed ahmed and then um Oh my gosh, I always have like cognitive blanks. Megan Levins 
And, um, and then I just, I'm, can't talk about the other things. Marley, you have things you're can't I'm talk just about doing, as well. I, honestly, I'm right now I'm just doing a variant cover for love everlasting and, uh, Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Like I can't take interiors until I get these kids in the school. <laughs> so I pick up what I can occasionally, but yeah, I, one of them will be waiting. Cool, so we'll get there. We're, we're all waiting. I'll be waiting for when you, your glorious return. I'm such a oh. fan of work. I love, I love everything about that. I, you draw I, I, layout. Like, I'm always like, I want to get in and do something for myself. And then I'm just like, I'll do a project with somebody else. <laughs> like, yeah. I want to, I want to get the band back together, Marley. So we're, we'll know. have to do something down the line. I will. That's the plan, right? Yep. That is the plan. Yes. I know. I'm so sorry. No, just, you, I got else? patience. <laughs> what else uh, do you have I've got a Star Wars <laughs> hyperspace that I'm yes, doing right now, which so is I'm fantastic. Doing, yeah, now, is that a, every other? Is that is that how that's working? Or is yeah, it yeah? So it's me, Amanda Debert, and Michael Morrissey, and I got mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I got tasked with Luke and Leia, Finn and Poe. Jabba and Greedo, and I don't know if I can, I don't know that the last one is announced yet, so I won't say what <laughs> okay. that one is, but that's been really fun. And then I just had um, Shifting Earth that came out with Flavia Biondi that was on Burger Books, which is amazing. And, and it is um, nominating season and that should be nominated. Oh, I, I hope people find it because it was delayed by like five months because of shipping and paper. And I just feel like it, it just sort of like got lost in the whole you know the I, whole thing. Thank you for every time I get a uh, Thank you, and um, and then I also did the critical role um, origin story for uh, Yash and Nidoran. So those are my new things, and then I've got a couple of um, I've got an OGN that I'm working on, and another licensed thing that's not announced yet that I'm working on. A busy Great. lady, Great. all busy ladies, and operas. You know, writing a new yeah, opera as well. Oh, sure. cool. And I have yeah. my World War One book that I'm one I day I will you know yeah like you know work on. So. Um, well, I, I will be at uh, I will be at C2E2 next oh, weekend. Okay. Um, we're going to have uh, I'm doing panels on Sunday. We're doing a world building panel with uh, Terry Moore, uh, Tom Zoller, oh, Fred Van Lente, and Liana Kangas. And uh, we're doing a 40th anniversary first um, 40th anniversary of first comics panel at, at Chicago. But uh, and tomorrow night, the Squadcast will be back with Mike Gold and myself, and we're going to have Scott Koblich on, so, and we're yeah, going to talk about his crazy 700-person cover. Um, <laughs> but most excitingly, uh, fans of the show and anyone paying attention, uh, next Tuesday night, I'm going to have the, the final Women in History, Women in Comics panel. Uh, I'm going to have on the show uh, Mindy Newell and Trina Robbins, oh, the first oh. women to write and draw wonder woman officially for for dc but like that's just what they have in common we're going to talk about like the amazing things of that and i'm i have goosebumps all over talking about this so <clears throat> next tuesday at eight o'clock on this podcast yeah, i would like to tune that. in for that that sounds great i will uh i will send you an invite so uh everyone thank you so much for doing this thank I, you I, yeah, and thank anyone you. who is, is watching Please, you know, go out and find Shade the Changing Girl and uh, and beg DC to make an omnibus. And, uh, and <laughs> or just, not, just or no. just reprint the first yeah, volume. Just That's the just reprint since it's out of print. Reprint the first volume. So yeah. you can get copies. So you can sell them. Yeah. So or so that, not that, me, <laughs> but so that people could buy them. <laughs> yes, exactly. The, the, this was the this was the and I'm gonna come back and we'll, I guess we'll finish up here, but. The, I really, I said I missed Young Animal earlier, and, and it's true because there was a lot of things that came out of it. Um, obviously, Doom Patrol was was important, and, and Becky, you, you wrote some of that towards towards the end of it. Um, but but besides Doom Patrol, Shade the Changing Girl was the the book that kept me coming back. Like I, after the first issue, I was like, yeah, I'm going to read all. I'm not I'm not ever going to stop reading this book. It was. And and it doesn't matter where they went or how they changed or what what happened to anybody. I was all there. It was crazy and madness and filled with heart and emotion and and 
you know, it was a book about people being, trying to be people and figuring out what it means to be a person. Thank you. So, thank you all so much. I'm so thank glad. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. I know. I'm so glad to Same. see all of you ladies. And I know, you too, Bob, terrible. but you know. Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm glad that you guys got to see each other, so. It's been a while. I guess yeah. For the pandemic. Yeah, okay. it was. A, it's a good reunion. Thank you for thank you for having us have a reunion. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you.